In today's video, we're talking about the one thing that every model railroad needs. No matter what era you model or which part of the world you're from, your model train layout or diorama needs weathering. Why? Because they make it like that. Hey everybody, if you're new here, my name is Tim and I'm a fabricator by trade. My main focus in model railroading is detailing, weathering, and graffiti. If what you're hearing so far sounds interesting, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you're notified when I post new videos. So I'm starting with an N-scale high cube box car. I've actually already gone ahead and done some graffiti on it. That's, that's for another video. Don't worry, stay tuned. Now I'm showing you the weathering first because it's something that just about anybody can do because I feel that every model railroad or diorama needs weathering. The graffiti is optional, so we'll get into that in a different video. But for right now, I'm gonna show you how to take this bright and shiny boxcar and make it look like reality. So the materials that I'm using for this are very, very basic. And oftentimes you already have them in your house. Now for me, I have a wife who wears makeup. In order to stay married, this is eyeliner that I purchased on my own. I did not raid her vanity <laughs> for eyeliner. Quite frankly, you can get this at the dollar store and I'm pretty sure she doesn't buy her makeup at the dollar store. So what I like to do when I'm weathering a train car is I like to start from the roof and I work my way down because that tends to be how gravity works. It starts from the top and it works its way down. So a technique I like to use on the roof is I just take my eyeliner and I just run a nice thick line down the middle. Maybe I give it a little bit of variation here and there. The, now the thing is eyeliner is very, very soft. So you're gonna have to make sure you keep your sharpener handy. And you can't use a pencil sharpener. You have to get yourself an eyeliner sharpener. Pencil sharpeners are useless for eyeliner. I found that out the hard way, but you can get eyeliner at the dollar store that comes with a pencil sharpener. Now that I have my eyeliner down the middle of the roof, I take a paintbrush, a completely dry paintbrush. Now the funny thing about it is the longer you use a paintbrush for this task, the better it is for it because it actually holds in some of that grime and it just makes your job a lot easier. So you'll see this paintbrush is just beat senseless, but that's okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from the middle and I'm just gonna drag out with my paintbrush and just blend it in. Now I'll do that from one side and then I'll go back over it from the other side. And you really wanna just get rid of that line entirely. Some people like to use powders and chalks for weathering. Some people like to use airbrushing. Some people use oils and essentially makeup, but there's really no wrong way to do this. It really just boils down to the preference and quite frankly, I use every technique. It just depends on the look that I'm going for. So this one, I'm just showing you a really basic technique. It doesn't take all that long. It doesn't require an airbrush and an air compressor and a paint booth and ventilation and all of that stuff. You can just get it done in minutes. We can dive deeper into more in the future. And if there's a technique that you wanna see or that you want me to try, leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. A little bit about myself while we're doing this. I have been in the model railroad hobby for probably about 10 years now. So I dove right in head first. And the first thing I realized was a lot of people were just taking the trains out of the box and putting them on their layout and that was it. And I thought, why aren't they rusty? Why aren't they graffiti? Why aren't they grimy? Like the world is a dirty place when you think about it. When's the last time you looked and you saw a train go by and every single car was bright and shiny and brand new? It's not the case, it doesn't happen. And that's kind of where the name of the channel came from is they make it like that. I want to model what they make. What you see in the real world is what I want to model. So what I've gone ahead and done is I'm taking the eyeliner once again and I'm just running a few streaks down these ribs and you'll find that rust tends to streak where there's something that it can streak from. So whether it's a rib or a rivet or a hinge or something like that, it will always run downwards from something. Now the odd time you'll get a bit of a streak down the middle like that, but you just try to make it random as much as possible. And then the same thing, you come in with your brush and pull down and just blend it all in. 
You never want to streak from side to side. I learned that the hard way when I was first starting my weathering and I remember my brother made fun of me. <laughs> He's like, why is, why does it look like it rusted while it was going down the tracks at 200 miles an hour? It just doesn't make any sense. I learned my lesson and ever since then, I've been streaking down with all my rust and all my grime. Now again, on this side, I'm showing you the graffiti side. That's a little bit of a teaser for another video in the future. And by future, I mean, it's probably gonna be the next video that you'll see. Now, if you wanna make sure you don't miss it, just be sure to click that bell down below so that you're notified every time I post a video. That way you don't miss a single video. Now, a handy trick too with the eyeliner, if you've put a little bit too much on and you're not happy with it, you can actually use a white eraser that you would use for pencil sketches. So I'm just using it because I was just a little too heavy on the end and I wasn't happy with it. So I just, I'm going back over it. Again, streaking up and down only, never side to side because even the eraser will leave marks going in a side to side motion. I really gotta put some WD-40 on this stool. Another product I like to use is Pan Pastels. Now they just go on with a makeup applicator sponge. This used to be white, but I've been using it for a long time. If you're not happy with it, the same thing. You can just use the white eraser and it just comes right off. They go on so easy, they come off so easy, and when you're happy with it, you just seal it up with some dull coat. Now this video is not sponsored by Pan Pastel, but Pan Pastel, if you are watching, hit me up. I'm very interested in a collaboration with you guys because I love your product. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going over it. It's hard to see with the graffiti, but I'm just going over the bottom edge with a black just to simulate some grime that's kicked up from the wheels. Now the thing is, like I said, this black goes on really heavy handed. So I'm just gonna go back in with the eraser. Now a pattern that I like to do when I'm doing the grime on the car is I start high on the ends and I go a little bit lower in the middle, kind of like a U shape, but not so exaggerated. You'll find that the wheels of the car kick up more dirt where the wheels are. And then in the middle, it's just kind of overspray. Now, like I said before, this is just one technique. There are literally hundreds of ways that you can weather your trains. And this is just one of the simple ways. I quite like how it looks. It dulls it down. It's not quite so bright. And it just gives it a sense of reality. Now, the last thing I do before I call it done is I'm just gonna hit it with a quick dusting of Tester's Dull Coat. Any dull matte finish clear coat is going to get the job done. What it's going to do is it's just going to seal everything in under a layer of clear coat. Now, the reason you want matte finish is because you spent all this time getting rid of shine on your car. You don't want to add shine when you put the clear coat on, but it's just going to make it so that you can't smudge it with your fingers. I mean, your fingers get pretty gross when you're doing this. It just keeps the fingerprints away from it, keeps it from smudging, just finishes it off. Now with the dull coat, you always want to make sure that you are in a ventilated area. I happen to have a spray booth in my basement that runs through a filter and then exhausts outside. Now it's not a lot of paint that you're putting on the car, but you always wanna make sure that you're following all the safety precautions. You've got a mask on, you're working in a ventilated area. And if you don't have a spray booth or a ventilated area to work, just work outside. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. This car was really bright when I first started. And with the graffiti, you can really see that it makes a difference and that it looks like reality. So I'm gonna dive a little deeper in the next video about the graffiti that I did on this car. And in the future, I'm gonna dive a little deeper into more detailing weathering and graffiti techniques. So you'll wanna stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell so that you're notified every single time I post a new video and we'll see you in the next one.